now we can start working on our liquidity script so for this what we have to do is we need to have all the addresses so let's come here we're going to need all these addresses I'm going to grab this address and that's what we're going to simply paste here so let's bring it down and paste here so this is the token addresses this is the contract addresses and now we need the address so this is the address the pool address grab that one and that's what we're going to replace paste right up here okay so this is the pool address so hope this entire thing makes sense and now we're going to write the code for our liquidity so let's do it quickly now let's take a variable we'll take artifact and now we have to import all the abis which we're going to use to provide the liquidity so we're going to follow the same pattern we need this non-fungible position manager and that's coming from the same module files okay v3 factory artifact contract non-fungible smart contract and then we have the abi there so this is the first import of the package now let's take the tokens the abi of the token so we need the abi of the token so which is inside this artifact contract Schweb, soul and this one now we need the other tokens abi which is inside the contract rayan soul Schweb, rayan dot json okay so these are the artifacts we have now we have to import the swap v3 pool which will allow us to create the pool and that's coming from the same place we have already imported multiple time json and that's the artifacts we have imported here now let's come here we're going to take this variable and we're going to import a couple of things from the ether js like contract that's coming from ether and we have to take another one we have to import the token and that's coming from our uniswap sdk core now we have to import the pool and positions and nearest usable tick because when we will define our price so we can't define any price just like this this is not how the uniswap work exactly so this is the function they have assigned so they're going to find you the right suitable the tick position of the pricing which you want to assign to the token okay so just use this function and that's coming from we have the uniswap v3 sdk so these are the packages we are required into this now let's come here we're going to take a function get pool data and in that we have to pass the pool contract address so remember the address we have taken the got so remember the address we have got when we deploy the pool so that contract we're going to pass here so let's come here first thing we have to take a couple of things so we need the tick spacing we need the feed we need the liquidity and we need the slot so this slot will have a lot of function in it and it will give us a lot of data which we actually need to display in our front end so we'll say await and we're going to use this promise.all and in this we're going to make a multiple call it's just like an api just it's just like you make an api call and here we're going to call this we'll call the pool contract this pool contract and in that we're going to call this tick spacing function it will give us the data of that let's do it quickly for other so this will give us the fee now we have to get the liquidity and liquidity function and now we have to get the slot and this will give us the slot functions and that's it so these are the function we are getting here now let's come down we're gonna create a and now we're going to simply return the data which we have taken so like tick spacing fee liquidity and slot so let's quickly return this one so tick spacing it's called tick spacing now we need a fee now we need a liquidity and we need a slot a zero price square price 96 and we have this slot function and then the zero index is the pricing okay as i told you that this slot zero contain a lot of data and it will come in the form of array okay the data you will get in the slot it will come in the form of array and how you can extract this data like this okay so now we have to get the other data which is a tick which is inside the slot one now we have to come down here and that's the two data we need for the time being if we find that we need more data we definitely take that so that's the function we have now we have to create the main function and in that we go to build the logic and we'll pass the contract pool so it's gonna be we'll have uh, this cost and we need the order and the signer order and the signer to await and it's coming from ether.get signer and this will give us the two wallet addresses we'll take this cost provider and we already have the provider and again we're going to use this warful dot provider which is available to us or you can use the ethers ether and or you can use the acmily 
the RPC URL for creating the provider, but this is the package we have installed ether woeful and that's the package we're going to install and it will create a ad it will create a provider with non address let's come here we will take a variable we'll say show up contract and now we have to get the contract of the token so right now we have this two token we have to get the tokens contract so we'll call it new contract and then we have to pass the address we have to pass the ABI so which we have inside this swap dot ABI and here we have to pass the provider so this will give us the contract now we have to take the other contract which is a Ryan contract and in that we have to pass the data so we need to pass the address of the token we have to pass the ABI which we have inside the artifact and we have to pass the provider so this will give us the two token contract let's come here we'll take a wait swap contract and we're going to call this connect method because we want to provide the liquidity to the signer too and we are using this connect method because owner is the owner of the contract remember when you deploy the core token so when you deploy the erc20 token at that time the signer the account the first account is the owner so we are using this connect method to connect the owner connect signer and we go to simply call approve and we'll set the position manager and in this we're going to pass the ether.utils parse int and we have to simply pass the amount of liquidity we want to provide position manager this is the amount we want to provide let's come here and we have to do the same thing for the other token as well so we'll connect signer to approve and we have to approve our position manager so it can take the token and in that we have to simply pass the the liquidity we want to create in both the tokens so thousand thousand Hope this makes sense to all of you guys we are not doing anything fancy here we are just following the normal stuff which we have done so many times in this project that's what's good come here we're going to take this cost pool contract and here we're going to take this new contract and in that we have to get the contract so we have to get this shor show roy and remember this is the pool address and this is the address we got when we deploy our last script like create pool deploy pool okay and that's the address we have taken on the top and that's what we are assigning in this pool contract we have to assign the abi abi which we have inside the uniswap v3 dot abi and we have to assign the provider this will give us the contract of the pool which we have created so we have the contract now we'll come here we'll call this cost pool data await get pool data and in that we have to pass the pool contract remember this is the function we have created at the top pool get pool data and we are passing the contract this will give us the data back in our pool data so nothing complicated very simple let's come here we got to say con web token new token and here we have to assign and assign the data which we want to take from the token so first we are targeting the web the chain id we have provided as we are testing locally so this is the chain id for the local and here we're going to provide the address work by the decimal point the name and the symbol so that looks pretty fine let's do the same thing for the other token rayan token new token chain id address decimals name and the symbol so that looks pretty fine to me so we have the tokens now we come down we can take a variable called pool and we will new pool and here we go to extract most of the data we need a lot of data so we'll use this new pool and here we go to define that swap token we'll define the ran token and we'll define the pool data fee the fee we want to charge we have to pass the pool data dot square price which we have inside this and we need to pass the pool data liquidity we have to convert it into a string we have to pass the pool data tick and these are the data is coming from that function okay so that looks pretty fine now let's come down we'll take a variable called position inside that we're going to call this new position and this is the method which we have in the sdk to get the data okay so let's call position and inside that we have to send an object and that we're going to say pool pools we will we'll say liquidity the data we need that's all we go to provide here so we have to convert it to one we'll say tick lower tick and here we're going to assign it and the lower tick is actually a price which we want to set to our liquidity okay so we'll use this function which we have imported and that we're going to pass this tick pool data spacing and we're going to call subtract this 
with this pool data tick spacing multiply by two so i'm not coming up with this method because these are there in the documentation if you really want to assign price to your liquidity in the range then you have to follow this formula which they have mentioned in their documentation okay so these are not magical script these are the formula you have to add to make the pricing in the range now let's take the upper and we have to do the same thing here we'll call this function we have to assign the tick we'll take this pool data tick spacing and we're going to add that and we're going to simply take the same thing model and we're going to multiply with that so it will go to plus two and minus two so you can imagine in this way and then we have to simply close it that looks pretty fine let's come here we'll take another variables we'll take this amount desirable amount and these are the second amount desirable and this data we are getting from here so positions dot mint amount when you call that you will give you the data of these two parameter okay so in the smart contract you have must have seen in our liquidity smart contract when we have written we have these methods when we building the prams like amount desire one and that data we are getting in amount one and amount sorry amount zero and amount one which is coming from mint amount and here we have to build the entire prams the data we need to pass into the liquidity function so here we are to build the prams so let's define the data it's going to be an object inside that we need the token first token so it's the token address we need the second token token one which is a ran address now we need the fee that fee we want to charge and we need the ticks lower and here we're going to call this method so we have this tick pool data tick pool data tick spacing minus we have to take this pool data tick spacing multiply by two so the same formula for we have to follow for the upper tick as well so we're going to take this four methods and we're going to call this ticks tick spacing we're going to subtract that with pool tick spacing and we're going to multiply with two simple not complicated and we have to pass the desire amount to desire we have to convert into a string same thing goes for the other one one desirable one to a string and we have to take the amount minimum zero and this is going to be maximum zero let's come here we're going to take the recipient is going to be the message sent the recipient is going to be sender dot two and recipient is going to be signer dot two address and we'll take the deadline math floor and we want to have a timing like close to this minute and that's the entire params we have written hope nothing is complicated to all of you guys it's pretty simple javascript we have written and these are the params which is already defined in the contract in the v3 sdk and the same methods we are calling here we are not doing anything extra we are simply following the documentation so let's good here now let's come and take a variable we'll say non-fungible position manager and in that we're going to take this new contract and we have to get this contract so we'll pass the position manager address we have to pass the abi which we have inside the artifact and we have to pass the provider so in this way we can easily able to get the contract of this non-fungible position manager let's take another variable tx and this will give us the data of the transaction okay so we'll call it non-fungible position manager will connect the signer to will simply call this mint function in that we're going to pass the entire params we have created along with the gas fee so gas limit so this is the gas limit i want to assign and i have found that this gas limit is most of the time it's work fine and the code executes let's create another variable we'll say receipt wait tax of wait so we have to wait till the transaction get completed once the transaction get completed i want to simply console log out this the entire receipt let's come down this let's this is the script we have to write in the terminal to make the code execute so this is the entire script and let's call this function main function in that we have to simply call this promise process dot exist and we have to politely shut down the application once we execute the code so this is the error and now we're going to shut it down so process dot exit one and that looks pretty fine we have 100 working code no more error we have here 
and this looks pretty good to me so we have written the entire code for this ad liquidity so we have the token address we have the the pool we have created in the last script we have the contract address we have the artifacts we have the tokens the imports this is the first function we have get pool data and that we are passing the pool contract we are getting all of these data and we are returning from here this is the main function we are getting these two accounts we have the provider we are getting the contract of the tokens we are getting the simply assigning this so we can take the provide the approval to our position manager so it can spend the token on behalf of us this is the contract and these are the general function we are using this token to get the data and here we are using this new pool to get the data and this is the positions and we have the entire big params so we can add the liquidity okay these are the pretty generic things so let's test this out open up your terminal and these are the commands we have to run and one thing we have to keep in mind that this internal blockchain should be running so when you deploy the first contract it should be running then deploy second then third and this is the fourth one because the moment you will stop the entire address would, would be changed so simply paste that one and let's deploy this contract and if i hit enter inshallah this will happen so just wait and the transaction went successful here you can see we got all the receipts the block hash the entire transaction is successful so i believe that you guys have got the same output you can see i got the entire data back here so all these events are get called and here you can see we got all the data back in our terminal the liquidity we have created successfully and i believe that you guys have got the same data you can see this is the two token that took so you can see this is the addresses this is the entire gas amount all the things you can able to find if you have any kind of error make sure to restart the application redeploy all the contract and the follow the normal steps and it will work fine okay so but in my case it's working fine so it's looking fine to me now what we can do is so it looks pretty fine now we have to create one more script to check the liquidity so the liquidity we have created we have to have a function so that function will allow us to check the liquidity and it will fetch the information of that liquidity so we can display into our front end applications and that's the last script we're going to write okay with that let's move to the next video